hunted and persecuted to the point of local extinction or pushed into tiny pockets of sustainable habitat, a number of species now find themselves the focus of ambitious programs to reintroduce them to the land and skies where they once thrived. In this biodiversity emergency we find ourselves, conservationists argue that sustaining the wildlife that has survived is no longer enough. It's time to take action to support nature's recovery. Hi hey everyone, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby and today we're going to be looking at rewilding and reintroducing certain species back into the environment. Over the centuries, Britain has lost many keystone species. These animals have a role as ecosystem engineers. They're essential to a natural environment. Top predators such as the lynx and the wolf drive ecological processes from the top of the food chain to the bottom. This is known as a trophic cascade. When you throw a top predator into the mix, you'll find the prey animals start to act very differently. This is otherwise known as the landscape of fear. Let's look at deer as an example. So if you place wolves back into an environment where there's deer present, you'll find their behavior will change significantly. They'll start moving around. They won't want to stay in one location for too long. They'll start avoiding places. The predator keeps them moving, meaning they'll graze less. This means that the foraging will take place in a wider area. Overgrazing is one of Britain's biggest problems when it comes to the environment. So a trophic cascade is the interaction between the predator and the prey animals. It's all about how the relationship alters ecosystems. It shows that living systems can't function properly without those larger animals. That's why the reintroduction of keystone species is a key element of rewilding. Except for Ireland, across Britain, we've suffered more deforestation and lost more large mammals than any other European country. Many places where you would expect to see wildlife thriving has been reduced to wet deserts. The seabed has been smashed and stripped of its living creatures. There's something deeply heartening about an extinct native species being reintroduced back into its former habitat. There's lots of animals that could potentially be reintroduced, but let's look at some mammals. The lynx. The lynx help woodlands regenerate by controlling deer and other invasive species. They can also reduce fox numbers. They're shy, elegant animals and they prefer the woodland. They'd have ample tree cover in parts of Scotland and Northern England. They live across Europe and have been successfully released into Switzerland. Wild boar. Wild boar can increase biodiversity through rooting and wallowing. They're highly effective bracken destroyers, creating space for trees and other plants to grow. They're already a tourist attraction in England. And they're already living unofficially in parts of England and Scotland. The wolf. Wolves can turn grassland into forest and create habitats that hundreds of species can use. They keep the deer on the move so that they can't overgraze fragile tree seedlings. Wolves live in a huge range of habitats in human population densities. They present a very low risk to people. Wolves have re-established themselves across most countries in Europe. They're a tourist attraction. Despite being shy creatures that avoid people where possible, they suffer from many centuries of demonization and myth-making. The bison. The bison helps to maintain a mosaic of habitats, a mixture of woodland, scrub and glades that creates a wide variety of niches for other species. The European bison is not native to Britain. The globally extinct bison was here, but the surviving European bison is a suitable surrogate for this extinct species. The bison has been successfully reintroduced in Europe in places such as Poland, Romania and Bulgaria. Whales 
including the fin whale, the sperm whale, the humpback whale, and orca. Whales can help support the entire ecosystem. They often feed at depth and release the nutrients in the surface waters when they poo. This fertilizes the plant plankton on which most of the other life of the sea depends. The great whales are probably responsible for burying millions of tons of carbon in the deep ocean every year as plant plankton absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It pulls it down to the abyss when it dies and sinks. Several large whale species have been appearing occasionally off our coasts. The wildcat. The Scottish wildcat is closely related to, but not the ancestor of, the domestic cat. Not much bigger than a domestic cat, it's fast and strong enough to kill young deer and hares. This species is very elusive and hard to count. The best estimates suggest that there's just a few hundred remaining. It's threatened by gamekeepers and hybridization with domestic cats. The moose. This enormous deer is semi-amphibious, able to submerge itself completely, close its nostrils and feed underwater. Submerged vegetation provides a higher proportion of its diet than it does for the hippopotamus. Moose could live happily in many parts of Britain, but as with the bison, we would hesitate to consider reintroduction until there had been a widespread recovery of trees and scrub. The study and application of rewilding has become much more prevalent in recent years, with articles and scientific publications being released on the subject. Despite still being in its infancy, there's still many current cases of rewilding, successful cases of rewilding. The development of rewilding may signify a new environmental narrative in which people can readily challenge governments to take actions to change the recovery and wellness in nature. Reintroductions should not happen unless there's widespread public support and consent. The final decision should be taken with local communities and landowners. We need nature and we desperately need nature in Britain to recover. Thanks for watching today guys, I really hope you've enjoyed learning about rewilding and reintroducing certain species back into the environment. If you have any questions or you want to contribute to today, please do comment below. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, please do and like the video if you've enjoyed it. Until next time.